I am Mia. Welcome back to my channel. Um, y'all yeah, just been just looking at some stuff online. Um, it's late. What time is it? It's twelve o'clock. It's twelve a.m. My kids sleep, so if I'm whispering a little bit, that's why. But um, I've been really talking to y'all a lot about Krishan family and stuff, and I was just on um, China Sun Live. Um, well, it's an old. It was from from like a week ago, but I just saw it on YouTube or whatever. And he's saying some very valid stuff and it's so funny that he said he dropped out of school in seventh grade you know around the time that it happened like so many some because he was molested by his mom's basically by his, by his uncle and aunt um which they was they in the same like they within the same years as him because he got it they probably about at least no more than seven to eight years older than him so they like his kind of like big cousin type tip but they his uncle his aunt whatever you know, and just everything that I've really been talking to you about in these videos, and even with my own life, or my baby daddy life, and what I'm observing, even he just said it because he is so wise. I really like her son. Like, he's, for him to have been through so much, you know, he's very wise. And like he just said, for him to have a seventh grade education, he dropped out of school at seventh grade. And for him to just be wise as he is, it just goes to show that it ain't about that book smart. It's about being observant and seeing what's going on around you. It ain't even all about the statistics of what they put out here on Google. It's literally about observing what you see in your environment and how so many of us go through these same things. And I spoke about that in one of the other videos I've done, just about how a lot of our boys, because I told y'all in that last video how I really just want to help the boys you know a lot of girls go through stuff but it's a lot of help out here for the girls but the boys be so they scared to do like he doing speak up on their abuse speak up this is why god me and that's what i was trying to get my baby daddy to do like bro you don't even know you you, you supposed to man that dude in his live y'all go on youtube and type in like um uh china um krishan's sister china speaks out or her son like Tristan that's his name um it's, it's on YouTube but what he was just saying in his live bro is real because I said the same thing I noticed that I noticed that with my own cousins I noticed that with my baby daddy I'm like most times when you drop out of school you're not dropping out of school because you just really hate school life is life and and then you got to go to school and deal with the, the pressure of school and all of this and you can't even focus because you still having flashbacks about what just happened before you left the house about what happened last night but what happened last week about what happened last year because when that stuff when that trauma hit it stick it stick you don't you don't just get the wipe it away and then it's just so sad because everything he was saying in that video is exactly what i already observe from the boys like from all the boys this is why it's it's like it is now and everybody want to blame you know oh it's oh like, the people got so much negative things to say about single mothers as if single mothers just truly want to be single mothers now of course we make the decision some of us to to leave the situation because it's toxic because it's not conducive to raising healthy children so we're going to leave the situation but people don't even understand i think some people even they just in denial because a lot of people especially in the black community a lot of people are in denial about what the real issues are about what the root of the issues are which is why i do and talk about what i talk about on my channel because we're not gonna keep sitting here pacifying stuff keeping secrets brushing under the rug like like we're taught to do in the black families we're not gonna keep doing that all this what goes on in the house down in this house we not. We want to expose the stuff because if, before we can move forward, we have to address the issue. We have to address the issue and stop trying to cover it up with all of this extra stuff and stop trying to run away from your problems. That's not going to solve it. And just to see how much he was saying in that video just now, bruh, about everything. And I was saying it too early on when China was on live. I'm like, you know, oftentimes when you the black sheep of the family or when you just pure you grow up in a toxic environment when it's in your household when when the toxic environment is in your very household you're going to go out to the streets 
Because you're looking for love in all the wrong places. What I tell y'all in that video, toxic love. That's the title of the other videos I just did. Toxic love led me to God. It chased like I was just looking for love in all the wrong places the whole time. The only love I truly ever needed was God's love. And it feels so good. And just like him and his mom and me and so many other of us. It's other molestation videos out here of girls telling these stories. I don't know if dudes out there really telling their story like that. And that's the problem. More guys need to speak up. Because you're, the little dudes that's coming after you or even older ones, people afraid to speak up. That's why I'm proud of her son for actually speaking up. This was supposed to, I said, I did that other video. Talking about my baby daddy. Like what the girl said. We was we was supposed to be on this mission together. It's the reason he went through what he went through. It's the reason I went through what I went through. It's the reason that we, I felt like we was connected on a soul level like despite all of that up so i talked about that in the other video i did um actually i ain't posted yet but before i posted I'm, I'm behind on so many videos i gotta get so many videos out like i just been working on so many different things i just be recording them but i don't edit them and post them on time and stuff but i'm definitely gonna be working on that this week so but we were supposed to we were supposed to do that together and he's supposed to be doing just like this boy doing speaking up because there's other dudes out here who need to know that they can speak up about these things. This is why so many of our guys, our black men, are sexing the way they 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 some hoes. They don't care who they they hate fucking you, your sister, your your cousin. They'll fuck your mama. She waking up. Well, she she slipped over so i already know she probably gonna end up waking up by me talking but that's why they so like they are and like he just said in the video it's like everything i already know and be saying that's what i said as much as i keep saying i want to go back to school bro you know i don't even really have to i'm observing i have that gift to just observe what's going on and they want to sit here and talk about all this statistics this is that what are y'all seeing in your surroundings what are you saying? What is the common thing that you're saying with our men? And we want to always blame all. Oh, we need to choose better men. Well, damn, if if the whole Baltimore, the whole D.C., the whole Chicago, the whole L.A., the whole Atlanta, we got girls from this population, girls from this area, girls from this area, girls from this area, and we all saying the same thing about these dudes. And you got the guys saying all these same things about the women. Obviously, it's an issue amongst us all. We all in, we come from different areas and we all got similar stories. To be on these lives and see so many girls pouring out that they stepdaddies, they fathers, they raped them, touched them, they grandfathers. It's sickening. But once again, like I did in that video about the writing experiment, once again, who did this to us? Cause somebody said in the comments, there's a lot of older generators. The older generation was real nasty. And it's trickling down, it's trickling down, it's trickling down. But who raised us and who raised them? And who, who did those things to them? We don't realize how affected we truly are by slavery. Because not only, like I said, like, come on, this is where we come from. Y'all was raping the slaves, rape, raping them Africans. The same thing y'all y'all was doing it to the women, you was doing it to the men too. They these elites, that's why I always talk about the one percent. Because them elites, the the um what's the guy behind Tesla? The hymns. Watching that movie, and it's so funny, my baby daddy made me watch that movie. Well, he didn't make me, but he turned on that movie, the um, message from the king. Y'all gotta go watch that movie. Because me when I, when I was watching that movie, I was like, this really would be going on. When you watch these movies, this stuff is nine times out of ten based off a true story. They get this stuff from somewhere. Even what I did at them videos back then about baby boy. We live in that same thing. Being grown now and watching baby boy. It's like, oh hell no. This literally what we be doing. 
This literally what we do. The same things in the mostly in the urban, mostly in the hoods. This is what we doing. And not even just in the hoods, because it's because nine times out of ten, you, we all started in the hoods. And then as you get out, your family make it out. Well, most people, I'm not gonna say we all started out, but black people, when they freed us from slavery, they put us in certain areas strategically, like I talked about in that right experiment video. Whatever the title of the video was, um, I don't even know what the title of it is. Breaking Generational Curses. It's one of my most recent videos. I don't know. It's within this month of October that I posted it, I believe. Or maybe the, the last week of September. But that, that video I was talking about, that rat experiment that they had done strategically on Blacks, this is all meant to, to self-destruct us, like for us to self-destruct. They don't have to do all the work no more because we do it to each other. We kill each other off. We 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 just are our own worst enemies. We left we let the devil use us too much. These sins they got us out here just that pride and that ego is our number one demise. Like that lust, that spirit of lust, that spirit of lust of how you having sex with your own family members, that incest shit. To see so many women that have been pregnant by their fathers, pregnant touched on by their stepfathers and to see so many women turn a blind eye and then as soon as your kids start acting out you don't know what's going on you acting like oh they just tripping they need to get put on medicine oh they're schizophrenic oh they're bipolar oh making a white man richer and richer from this pharmaceutical industry like look at we how we feed into this stuff and all of this stuff is literally spiritual warfare it's spiritual wickedness Spiritual wickedness, these demons, they sap it to you when you're weak and when you're vulnerable. And then he, then that, that, that devil convinces you to shh, keep it a secret. People are going to laugh at you. People are not going to believe you. Do this, do this. And truthfully, people don't be believing you. But the nine times out of ten, the one thing about it with these parents and these family members that try to, nah, that ain't happened. They're in denial themselves. Some of them have been through it too, and they just brushing it off like, okay, it happened to me too. What are we gonna do about it? What are we gonna do? We come from a long line of this and that. It's just, they wanna brush it under the rug. Some of the women are so desperate. That's why we as women, we gotta have a backbone, bruh. We got to stand up. You gotta stand for something or you will fall for anything. And look who gets the aftermath of that. Look who it affects truly. It affects our children. We got to stop putting all this love and love and love. And because society say, oh, you got to just keep the family together. The black household is so this and so that. If it's healthy, yes, keep it together. But people only do what you allow. And if you allow a person to tear you down, man or woman, if you allow it, it will continue and it will ruin you. This is why so many of us suffer from self-esteem issues. Why we all just coping with these drugs, the liquor, sex. Like he just said in that video, he knows some, he was being real, real. Y'all gotta go watch her son, Tristan. And I, he was, so I'm saying he really needs to, he needs his, to get on YouTube and do a platform. I'm gonna probably DM him and tell him that. You need to get on here and start speaking that stuff because these young dudes need to hear that stuff. Like everything he was talking about from the streets to how he was on the block at 12 years old. Same shit my baby daddy be saying, you know, and they'll give you, give you the drugs, give you the pack, tell you don't, you know, you got to sell this. Don't fuck my pack up or that's your ass. Just like on the movie ATL. Just same thing. They, that's what I'm saying. These movies. They get the stories from real life situations. That Lifetime movie that came on with the, the father um, had all those kids with his daughter and kept her in a basement in some dungeon in a basement. And the mama never knew. She just thought the girl went missing because how he felt about that daughter. He felt like she was the daughter who didn't listen. And it's like he wanted to take control over her and you know how these narcissists feel and these weak these weak links how they feel 
Oh, I, don't, I can't take control over myself. I can't control my life, my own self. Let me control who's the weaker vessel, the kids, the women. Let me play my manipulation on her. Once you get her mind, that's what I'm saying. As a mother, as a woman, if you're not strong, these men will fuck you up and your kids. Because if he can do anything to you, he can be like, damn, I can do anything to these kids too. You got to stand for something or fall for anything. But the thing is, like I was saying with the guy, I know I be getting all over the place. But like he was just saying, they give you the pack, tell you, you better, you better not, just, you better not fuck up my pack or I'm on your ass. Look at Friday. I'm on your ass if you fuck up my pack. They don't tell you what come with that. They don't tell you you might go to jail. You might, they don't put you on game. And it's so funny, my baby daddy used to say that to me. He'd be like, man, he just used to be upset and vulnerable. Just like that dude is, that's what I like. I love dudes who are okay with expressing their feelings. Society has taught boys that it's weak to show emotion. It's weak to express how you feel. It's weak to even have those kind of feelings. You're human, bruh. You're human. You have feelings too. You hurt too. You bleed too. You're going to have those feelings. That's why they be holding it all in. Then they raging, mad, angry. And like he just said in the live, a lot of dudes have been so traumatized. They went through so much trauma. The only way to release it is through sex. It's through, he said, he knows some niggas who they, they fuck it off. They have sex to, to, to release that trauma. Some niggas, he's like, he's like, cause he said, we, I mean, we can't just be out here sober. Sober after dealing with all that shit, you will fucking literally you you will do so you will go shoot up the schools and shit like these other motherfuckers be out here doing like you know who, and it's true because a lot of people don't have God, a lot of people don't understand why they had to go through that. They feel like you know they may have even turned away from God because they went through those things, or maybe they even never met God. Like me, I didn't even know God. I wasn't introduced to God. And then you got some people like my baby daddy. Well, why would God let this happen to me? I'm so pure. I'm such an angel. Why would God let this happen to me? Why would God let you take my baby away? Why would God? Why would God? Why would God? God knows the plans he had for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. It might seem like it's all over the place. Your puzzle all over the place. But God will put the pieces in order for you. It might seem like a bunch of broken pieces. But at the end, it comes together in a beautiful picture. You have to. We have to learn how to turn our pain into purpose. We have to. We have to give back. We have to teach the young. We have to be the ones. Anybody watching this video... Bro, we have to be the ones to, to break the curses. There's no reason why we should be allowing. We didn't got raped. We didn't been abused. We didn't been in toxic relationships. And then we letting our kids go through the same things because we're not teaching them. We're not pouring into them. We're not listening to them. We're not observing of them. We're not observing their behaviors. We're not paying attention to them. We're not loving them. We're not nurturing them. I knew she was going to do that. Yeah, we, we're we not teaching them. That's why I be saying, y'all you know, would even say that about my baby dad. Like, how you, why would your mom let, but this is what I'm saying. We have to do better as women too. We don't even understand how powerful we are as women. We don't understand how powerful we are. These dudes will only do what we allow them to do. But we be so desperate for love, so worried about what society is going to say that we are willing to just stick in there and deal with whatever for the sake of having a man because we don't want to be alone. Because maybe we've been alone growing up. Maybe we ain't feel that love in the house. So this dude may have made us feel some love in the beginning. And we, then shit got rocky, but we still holding on to what it was in the beginning. Or we still holding on to the one out of seven days, five out of 30 days of a month that he treating us right. And we just sticking with it. And we sticking with it because financial security. 
but look who's getting damaged in the process are young we're polluting the earth we're polluting our generations look how the generations get just get worse and worse get more nonchalant and more nonchalant but one thing i can say is modern day women this is why these men these narcissists they hate modern day women because we're not like our grandparents when it comes to just sticking around and staying around because look at who talk look at who the ones them the daddies and the granddaddies that they molested the kids and raping their own daughters. They the ones because they had some severe trauma because they're the ones closer to them slave the slave days when they were raping them. Them men were getting raped too. And when you frustrated and angry, who you take it out on? You gonna take it out on your family. When stuff going on out in the world, you go home even in modern day times, when stuff is going on at work, you go home mad at your family, mad at your man, mad at your woman, mad at the kids. You drinking dollars and then that, them spirits, liquor is a spirit. That's a spirit. Why do you think it's called spirits, beers, and more? It's a spirit, a demonic one. That liquor ain't supposed to go in us. That liquor does stuff to you. It make you forget who you are. That's why I think I don't like drinking, bruh. I've never had good experiences drinking. Drinking make you angry. It brings out them thoughts. People be drinking to cope the whole time. That stuff end up making you think about stuff you don't want to think about. Make you start crying. Make you start... Look what Chris, it be doing to Krishan. You know, it make you sit there in a sunken place. That's why I couldn't be with my first baby dating him. I'm like, right? And he's that's on that not too long ago. You're an alcoholic, bro. Like, my, my dad, my mom left my dad. Couldn't be with my dad because he was an alcoholic. And y'all get drunk, get to doing dumb shit. That demon get to coming out. You get to doing shit that you normally wouldn't do when you're sober. But you drinking to cope. It, it temporarily make you feel good. Make you temporarily it make you feel like you forgetting everything that it happened but truthfully after a couple minutes a hour 30 minutes it started wearing off and you get the coming back to reality and it actually just is that liquor that's why they give it to us what did i just do in my video yesterday about the drunkenness this is why god this is why america is about to feel god's right god is angry god is angry at us God is angry and people always want to say, oh, just God is full of love. Yes, he's full of love. And a person that loves you want nothing but the best for you. Want nothing but the best for you. They're going to come down hard on you sometimes because they want the best for you. Diamonds are made under pressure. They're going to come down hard on you. It's to teach you a lesson. Like I just said, for he know the plans he had for you is not to harm you. It's to prosper you, give you a hope in the future to lead you on the right path that he has for you. You know, and it's just, we just so messed up, bruh. You know, we got to get it together. And everybody wants to hear and, you know, and it irritates me when I see people talk about, oh, you know, you got the, the dudes who don't come from these environments. They be mad at the hood dudes because the girls want the hood dudes. Then the girls want the hood dudes so bad, but they don't even know the the everything that's behind these hood dudes or why they in the streets, why they put on them personas, why they like that. And truthfully, once you get with them, then you realize, damn, it's fun because they they are it, it give make you feel like okay, you having some fun. They might put you on to some stuff that you didn't know previously. But a lot of times, oftentimes, they end up hurting you because they got their own trauma, so much packed on trauma before they even hit the age of 21, bruh. My cousins died at 23, because I'm 29. 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017. Hold up. Nine years ago? He did not die nine years ago. He died in 2013. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20. My cousin been dead for nine years. 
That can't be right. That can't be right. But he died in 2013. It is 2022. My cousin died at 20 years old. It was because I was in college. Wow. And then his brother died six months right after him. Execution. They didn't kill my baby. They shot my baby 26 times, bruh. And just the stuff that's going on in the hoods, the, 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 this is just all, it just irritates me what was done to us that, that has got, I told y'all in that video, that rat experiment, how this is strategically done against us. I don't know what the white man got so much, why they hate the black people so bad, bruh, but they want us to destruct. It's sad that you can envy a person's strength that much that you really hate them that mad, that bad. They really know our true power, but we don't know our true power. We're ignorant. We don't know who we are. We don't know ourselves. And when you don't know yourself, just like men do, just like these narcissists do, even your narcissistic parents, because I'm not going to act like it's just men narcissists, these women narcissists, look who I'm talking about, look who a lot of us is actually talking about these days, exposing these narcissistic mothers, these toxic mothers. When pe people see your strength before you do, people see your anointing before you do, but when you don't know yourself, you can't tap into that. You can't see it. And they can play on it. They can mind fuck you. They can play you, manipulate you, do things to tear you down inside out so that you will never reach your full potential. And that's what these pale faces have done to us. They saw it before us. They know our strength. And they've done everything to keep us down, to keep us from finding out and tapping into our true power. And it's interesting because as they start to see us climb out this bucket that they try to put us in, they try to place more restrictions on us. But no, we just keep, we, it's that, that instinct in our nature, in our nature to just be hungry. Like he said in that video, we hungry. Like he said, like, like Tristan said, all this stuff we go through, they be trying to break us. Some people fold under the pressure, but some of us don't. A lot of us don't. We don't even see, we still waking up the next day. We still doing this, we still doing that. We gotta really tap in, bruh. We gotta really, like the black community needs true healing, true healing. We need to truly get them, them sins, them devilish demonic spirits up off us. Because until we get those up off us, we not gonna reach our most fullest potential. We're not going to reach it. We're going to keep getting our own worst enemies. We got to get these spirits up off us, y'all. And I'm going to keep doing videos talking about this stuff, bro, because it just saddens me. And that's why I feel for these boys. I feel for them. I feel for the girls. But just because I feel for you don't mean I'm going to be easy on you now. You got to put that work in. And that's why they don't be liking me. Um, they ain't that they don't be liking me. My baby daddies, they be getting mad because I apply that pressure. I don't play with them. And I'm not going to play with y'all. I'm not y'all mom. Let her play with y'all. She They the reason y'all like that now. Let them play. I ain't playing with y'all mothers. I'm not playing with y'all. I don't care who don't like me. Y'all not going to like me. Because God sent me here on this mission. God sent me here because he know I'm the one brave enough. I don't care. I'll go against you, your mama, your sister. I don't care because I'm going to tell you what, what it is. Accountability needs to be held. And until we start holding each other accountable and trying to, because to change, you have to first admit. Admitting is the first step to deliverance. Admitting that there is an issue. Admitting where you went wrong. Because if you don't know where you went wrong, how are you going to fix it? How are you going to fix it? You have to know where you even messed up at. You can't sit here and think that you're just so perfect and let your pride and your ego just tell you that mm, I'm just perfect. Oh, I can just do anything. When my first baby daddy say, oh, I don't like when nobody tell me. I don't like when nobody correct me. 
That's why he always had issues with me. Because I'm, I, what you did, you doing that drunk, dumb shit. And we got a whole baby out here. You doing that dumb, drunk shit. I'm not with it. I'm not with it. You go find somebody else that's going to be willing to accept that stupidity. Because I'm not. I'm not. I don't care about what society say, about being a baby mama, about being single, about running a... I'm not dealing with it because guess who it's going to affect? My kids. And I'm not letting my kids be fucked up from seeing chaos in the house, from seeing just the, the liquor and the drugs destroy their father and destroy me. That's not what they're going to see. That's not what I'm going to allow them to see. I'm a generational curse breaker. I'm not allowing my kids to get molested and touched on. You know, I can't control everything. And that's why I just talk to my daughter at this young age, six. Talk to her. This is why I had to learn when I was dealing with that toxic dude I was dealing with. And he almost killed me. And it was just so toxic. I just was on Instagram looking at my DMs. And I was just scrolling. I actually, he's that his, I went through our messages from two years ago. He's still in it. And I just see how toxic I was with him. Like, we both was toxic. I was toxic too. And he even, he said, he said, I really, he said, even, man, you just crazy. Like, <laughs> he said, I love you. I, you just crazy. Like, <laughs> and it's crazy because I was, I was on some shit too. And I had to say to Nia, like, look at what you doing. You know, you didn't, you, you, you wildin' too, sis. You're wildin'. You have a whole three-year-old. My daughter was three at the time. I'm like, my baby need me. And even my baby dad said, man, the dick can't be that good. Because I called my baby daddy at the time. Like, you, I'm about to, I'm probably going to go to jail because I just drove off on the police because he tried to snitch on me and stuff for uh, biting him. <laughs> just, it's not funny. It's sad, but it's just the toxicity, you know, because I'm like, nigga, you ain't going, I done been through too much. And then all it took was the first nigga to put his hands on me. Every other nigga after that, I'm like, it's smoke. It's smoke. I'm not letting nobody keep playing with me. But it gets to a point where that even becomes toxic. Because you going back at it. It's just somebody's going to end up hurt. And as I started looking at it, after that time, after he did that stuff with the gun, I said, you you already pulled a gun out on me one time. You ain't put, put it up to my head number. He pulled it out. Second time, you pulled it out. And pointed it at my fucking car. At my window, like, like you was about to shoot through, like, literally, right there, like, literally. And I don't even think my, uh, window was all the way up. Because I wasn't even, ex like, uh, my window would definitely be over yet. Because that lady, I definitely had my window up. But just that toxicity from that, that situation that day, my life flashed before my eyes. Because I'm like... This nigga was, he literally had just chased me in the car, like a fucking uh, police chase around the city. You chasing me in the car. And all I could think about, once once he did the gag, put, my life flashed before my eyes. And I was like, my baby, my daughter needs her mother. This is why I escaped this from Maryland now with the second one. Because you're not going to, y'all not going to take me away from my children before I'm supposed to. Nobody's going to take, they need me. I can't leave them alone with their dads and then they leaving them with this person. And this person try to touch on them. This person, the devil get to them. I'm not letting the devil get to my kids, bruh. I'm not. That's one thing I can't do. You know, and I just really feel for all of us who've been molested, raped, abused, you know, Abuse in all aspects. But as a kid, I have a special place in my heart for children because you're weak. You're truly the weaker vessel. Women and children, that's why I like they saying, women and children used to be off limits. You got motherfuckers out here now, they smoking a woman just as fast as they smoke a nigga out here. Before they'll even smoke a nigga. Because some of these niggas so, so weak out here, they scared to even, the way they come at women, the way they'll put their hands on a woman, they would never do that shit to no nigga. You know, but it's just like, it's just a lot. We're not teaching. We, we teaching our kids and our little brothers and little sisters 
and little nieces, Lord, we teaching them the wrong things. We giving them the guns. We giving them the drugs. Like my baby daddy said, that second one he said. Because with me coming into his life, I made him realize, like, no, you've been taught all wrong. You've been taught all wrong. And he just, he one day on the phone, he, he during this whole time, before all this happened, he was just crying. He said, why nobody ever taught me this stuff? Why he just feels like he's at a disadvantage in life? Because he wasn't exposed to some of the things I was exposed to. And he didn't know. Because once again, he dropped out of school in ninth grade. And I said that. I said, these dudes drop out of school. Because like I said, my it's the reason I've only had, I've always had hood dudes. My first baby daddy, he graduated school. I have double guys that graduated high school. But I always get these ones. Most of them, three of them. That was cause out of all the dudes, the, the serious ones that I was more serious with, three of the five that I was like truly serious with like that have dropped out of school in early ages, in high school, around the same time. And I know what my very first boyfriend used to go through. Well, not my very first one, but my first high school boyfriend, really, because I didn't have it. Little, y'all know the story. So I've been dealing with boys since my molestation from a little child. Um, but even with him, like I used to see what he would go through with his stepfather, his mama just allowing stuff. You know, I used to sneak him in my house. He used to go to school. We went to the same school, but he stayed suspended because he was fighting, like, or you know not wanting to go to school because they got him in the slower class. I didn't say that. I said, why well, I always get the slow niggas? <laughs> because especially with my second baby father telling me he was in the slow class too, I said, damn, why well, I always get the slow niggas? <laughs> but it's not even that they slow because they smart. My baby daddy is smart for real. You might not know how to write and well, he can write, but y'all might not know how to, y'all words might be fucked up sometimes because you dropped out of school. Shit, truthfully, I didn't learn grammar, proper grammar, until I got to my freshman year of college and I had to take that reading fundamental class. That's when I truly learned grammar. And look around the internet. Most people don't know grammar, graduated and everything. You don't know proper grammar. You don't know the difference between woman and women, men and man, they, their, their, like, I'm even teaching my daughter that. I'm like, shoot, say, Donnie, it's all right, because... Uh, you got people that's my age and older that don't know the difference between there and there. Like over there and their shoes, their clothes. Like, <laughs> I don't even mean to take, do that, but you know, he's wise, just like that boy Tristan. You know stuff. You might not be book smart, but you street smart. You have the experience. Life is your best teacher. Life has taught me so much. Life mixed in with the books. I've retained more of the stuff that I've learned through experience than I have the stuff I've read in the book. Even though I graduated college, a lot of that stuff was just, for me, it was cramming information to pass. The whole goal was just to get the degree. The whole goal was just to pass the test. But I wasn't retaining that information. But life has taught me more than that could have ever taught me observing, using my eyes, my ears, and paying attention to patterns and behaviors of the people in my surroundings, of the people, of the stories, and this paying attention. I'm like, dang, this is what has taught me more. I haven't even went back to school for this. I keep talking about I want to go to school for psychology. That stuff hasn't even taught. I haven't even went yet, but I keep saying, do I really need to go to school for this God? Because I already see it. I can see. I already said that. Before this dude even said that about the school, I said that. I said, these dudes drop out of school. Even the girls, they drop out of school. Because stuff going on at home. They ain't just wanting to be failures. When you that young, going through so much stuff, your brain don't even have the capacity to even understand what's going on. You, you don't truly even start waking up till after 25. It's a reason you get to stay on your parents' insurance till 26. 
your brain, my brain, what it does now was not doing this at 25. As smart as I was at 25, if I was that smart and it was as wise as I am now, I wouldn't even probably had dealt with my second baby father. But once again, everything happens the way it's supposed to because had I, I got more experience with him, I got the icing on the cake with him. I got the icing on the cake. He led me into my relationship with God. He led me into my purpose. And, you know, we just, this is why a lot of us is baby mamas and we didn't been molested, raped, that it made you hypersexual, make you looking for love in this one, make you codependent. You know, this stuff, that, that stuff really has an effect on you. And people sit here, like how Kevin Samuel used to do, um, and all his guinea pigs and people who, and he obviously went through stuff too, you can tell, but when you become a narcissist, because childhood, even with all these, I've, I've, like, I've literally been studying these diseases and stuff, like schizophrenia, and I told you I have BPD, by, um, borderline personality disorder. And like I said, all this stuff is spiritual stuff, but truthfully, it stems from childhood. It's them demons that get put on you. Just like I'm looking up last night, people say, the, the things that are, it's no real known of where schizophrenia comes from, where this stuff come from. Some of it is genetics. Some of it is through environmental factors. It's nine times out of 10, more so than the genetics, it's environmental factors. It's your household. Look at what they said about Dahmer, the chaotic environment. As a child, this is why kids cry when they hear all that screaming, that fussing. Their little brains is like, it's too much noise. It's like, ah, and you, if you fight and all this, that stuff literally messes with you. You so used to hearing all of that stuff, even once it's done, you still think you're hearing stuff. Like your environment, it's like the chaotic environments that we are having our children in for the name of love, for the, the name of a two-parent household. That's what's literally destroying our children. Then we fall into the white man trap and say, oh, he got this, he got ADD, he has schizophrenia, he's bipolar, he has this, he has this. Let's put him on some medicine, put him on these medicines. The medicine still ain't hardly doing shit. Looking in the comments yesterday on this schizophrenia video and to see how many people were saying like their parents have it or they have it and they don't even, they taking the medicine, it still ain't quite working. And I can see in my baby daddy with his medicine was keeping him calm and it made him a little bit too slurred and too too mellow plus you're still smoking the weed and which can counteract with this stuff and truthfully i feel like you probably just need the weed and once again like i did in that video like i never posted and i'm gonna try to get these videos posted this week bruh um, i'm gonna stop recording videos and just get everything posted but i got so many videos um but this is why I want to, th I think that's what we need. The weed is what we're supposed to have to calm us down. Not all these other damn drugs. Like I said in that video, it's, what's the odds they keep us away? They, the weed was such an issue for us for so long. But weed is one of the very things that got me in touch with God. But that's what I talked about in another video. Um, but yeah, y'all, um, this video already long. I ain't end up meaning for it to be this long. But nonetheless, this is just real conversations candid conversations needed in a black community we have to we have to get it together you know and it's so funny tristan said in the video look at all the people who try to uh all the dudes um, who try to be activists for nonviolence and bringing us together as black look how they have been they got them out of here because the white man don't want that they don't want you like i know by time it's said and done by the time my mission said it down, they're they going to be trying to get me out of here too because I'm an activist. I'm for us doing, <laughs> coming together. I'm for us coming together for a greater cause, you know, and they're not going to like that. But it is what it is. 
I'm doing what God sent me here to do. When when my mission is done, I'll be sent on home to the Lord. Like I always just say, I just want my kids to be grown and have everything that mommy instilled in them. You know, my little daughter is sick. She is so smart, bro. She reminds me so much of me. You know, it's just, she's very smart. And this is why I need to be here for her. I need to show her this love. Like she needs me. She needs me. Your kids need you. The younger generation needs us. They need somebody. It's so many little kids out here who don't have moms, don't have dads, don't have anyone. Like I said, I feel like an orphan in this world even with having a mom because I still didn't get what I really needed from her, that tender love and care. I mean, yeah, you provide it. You provide it. Yeah, cool. whoop de doo but I didn't get that emotional, that that emotional aspect, that emotional love, that tender love and care, that nurturing. Women are put here to nurture, and we're not nurturing our children. Nurture them and teach them the right and wrong. Discipline. You can nurture them and still discipline them. Because one thing about it, my kids get all the love in the world, and I'm sweet, and I'm loving, and I'm kissy-huggy. But at the same time, I'm not with no bullshit. Don't come with the bullshit. And I'm going to check you as needed. You know? But I'm going to be talking about this stuff in a lot of videos. We just, we need healing. We got to heal, y'all. And then actually, this is why y'all going to be coming to see me soon. Because I'm going to be certified in this thing eventually. I don't really feel like going back to school. I ain't even going to cut to you. But then I also like learning about this stuff. Like I just be in here doing my own research. And based on what I, everything I already know too. But we really need God. We need literally to let God in our lives. A lot of people know church. That's not a, relationship, a true relationship with God. Just because you know the scripture don't mean you have a relationship with God. Just because you show up at church every Sunday don't mean you have a relationship with God. If you're not talking to God every single day. Or at least multiple times throughout the week besides just on Sunday and if you're not practicing what you preach if you're not truly reading the word and implementing the word you're not you're you're not doing what you're supposed to do and that's just what it is we have to allow God to enter we have to you let God use us we have to stop running running from him and run to him and this is oftentimes why he allows a lot of things to happen to us. He allows it. He allows it because it's going to teach you something. If everything was glitz and glamour all the time, you wouldn't learn no lessons. You wouldn't get no wisdom. Wisdom, it comes from experience. Wisdom comes from you taking those L's. You have to take an L. You have to lose and fail you have to do that to gain the wisdom, you know, but I know my video probably been all over the place, but nonetheless, like I said, we need healing in this community and I am going to be the spokesperson for this. We got to come together. We got to, it's like, I really want to have like a secret meeting for us. I feel like um y'all remember on um that Medea movie at the end with um Cicely Tyson. I think that was Cicely. Don't get me the line. Um but I think that was her name. And she was like, enough basically because everybody was bickering and stuff. That's how I feel. I'm just like I just want everybody to just come together, get in the field. I want to get some acres of land and bring everybody out there and we have to talk and hug and forgive and apologize. And pour it all out. Pour out your feelings. How I made you feel. How you made you feel. How you made this person feel. Get it out. Because the devil wants us to keep that stuff in and hurt us and keep us in them dark rooms. He wants us to keep them secrets. Get it out. We have to get it out. And once you get it out, you feel free. You feel free. That'd be the devil in your ear telling you, nope, keep it a secret. Devil 
devil wants that. The devil wants you to to do that. No, we need to get it out. And we need to be accountable. If somebody if somebody tell you you offended them, you hurt them. Okay, I'm sorry. You have to truly be that way though. But these narcissists out here, some of them are just incapable. But even with them, like I said, they know right from wrong. But sometimes they often be believing their lies so much. This is how you can end up passing a lie detector test. Because if you begin to believe your own lies, it becomes truth to you. But the thing is, I got that get together. These people, the, people who be trying to lie all the time, I really be catching them. I be catching you. You. you like trying to be saying, once you tell one lie, you got to tell another lie and another lie and another lie. And eventually you get to forgetting your lies. There's just so many of them to keep up with. That's why it's easier to tell the truth. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Devil likes lies. God likes truth. And when you tell the truth, you put that devil to rest. So I'm done talking, y'all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This is...